All right, what's up YouTube, Anubis Black here, and today it is finally time for me to address the last title in my Nickelodeon Games Marathon, and I know it may be confusing for some of you to see me talking about a Nick game while I'm currently in the middle of my Cartoon Network series, but technically this video should have came out several weeks ago, but as I've said before, I've been wrapped up with other projects lately, and I also went through a small bout of writer's block, but no worries though, because I'm back for real this time. So anyway, the subject at hand for today is Spongebob Super Sponge, an old classic PS1 game based on the most recognizable and profitable cash cow, <clears throat> I mean character, to ever come out of Nickelodeon. And as far as I know, it is the only solo Spongebob game on the PS1, which makes sense, I guess. The series wouldn't truly explode with popularity until the PS2 era, and trust me, I'm going to have a field day breaking down some of those games at some point. Anyway, my history with Super Sponge started with me buying the game at a garage sale for $5 many, many years ago, and I obviously wasn't super good at playing video games yet. However, I still had quite a bit of fun despite never beating it at the time. Thankfully, as an adult now, I have the means of recapturing that old feeling of nostalgia, and I'm actually skilled and knowledgeable enough to know how to get past the first boss this time. And any of you who have been a part of this channel for a while now, know that I did play and stream this entire game a few months ago, so if you haven't seen it and you want to check it out, I will place a link to it in the description of this video. But yeah, like I said, since I finally got to beat the game, I can actually talk about it in depth and share some insight on my experience. So, without any more further delay, let's take a dive straight into this analysis and see if Spongebob Super Sponge will sink or swim. Spongebob Super Sponge initially released on November 5th, 2001, and was developed by Climax Action, just like the DS version of Nicktoons Unite. And the GBA counterpart for the game released just about three days later on November 8th. But having mentioned that, keep in mind that this review will solely focus on the superior console version. So, yeah. And speaking of Nicktoons Unite DS, that game was composed by Matt Simmons, just like Super Sponge, and comparatively, you can really tell by how similar they sound. I think he did a great job of capturing the general style of SpongeBob's tunes, especially in the instrumentation. This was definitely one of my favorite things about the game, however, the most important aspect of any video game is, of course, the gameplay. Around the time this game came out, 3D mascot titles were becoming much more popular and relevant in the eyes of PlayStation, but for some strange reason, Super Sponge turned out to be a side-scrolling 2.5D platformer, which is not a bad thing, mind you, but still a little bit odd considering how the Rugrats games were all 3D, Nicktoons Racing had 3D models for both Sponge and Patrick, and even the freaking Wild Thornberries got a 3D game with cutscenes. <laughs> I digress, it's still not that big of a deal. I just figured I'd point it out. <clears throat> now, as for the control scheme in this game, it's pretty simple. SpongeBob can jump, butt bounce to take out ground enemies, and pick up special items to use in certain situations, like a jellyfish wand or the karate gloves, for example. Occasionally, they will be necessary to progress depending on what level you're in, such as the leaf blower or the balloon thingy, and even though these extra little tools come in handy sometimes, especially during the boss battles, the game itself is very easy to get through and don't worry about being punished too hard for dying, because all you have to do is hit continue and you're right back at the start of the current level, kind of like an arcade machine. <clears throat> The health pickups in this game are golden spatulas that fly out of you if you get attacked, and you must pick them up or collect more to get your health back. Hmm, I'm not sure why, but something about this mechanic sounds very familiar. Huh. 
Well, anyway, each level you explore will have some sort of gimmick or something that adds a tiny bit of variety to how you make it to the goal. Some of these are definitely better than others, but nothing too frustrating to deal with. Because, as I said, the game is super easy. Your objective will pretty much stay the same from start to finish. Get to the end of the stage and collect the required item for your fetch quest. Yes, I said fetch quest because that's basically what Spongebob is doing most of the time. Apparently, the game's story entails Spongebob preparing for Patrick's surprise birthday party, but obviously he has to go around and pick up a bunch of random sh** for other characters along the way. I mean, whatever it takes to get to the objective, I guess. At least the premise is more engaging than building a puzzle, and I also do like the voice acting and dialogue for the characters. Hi, Squidward! Ready for another great day together, friend? Today's Sunday, SpongeBob. Forget the Krusty Krab. Hey, moron, why don't you take your net and go waste somebody else's time? After about two or three levels, you will have to fight a boss battle, and they each have some sort of little exploit to get past them, like throwing jellyfish at them, bouncing on tires to hit them from in the air, or distracting them with steam projectiles and other obstacles. All of them are mostly easy and can sometimes be tricky to hit, but still pretty easy. I can really tell that the game was definitely made with younger, beginner players in mind, and I think that's great. Despite whatever clunkiness or pitfalls you may run into, the game is an overall breeze to complete, and not a bad way to spend two hours, I'd say. Even with my own experience as a child, I had quite a bit of fun returning to this title after so many years, and it was a real treat to hear the amazing soundtrack once again. The game is simple enough to where pretty much anybody can pick up and play it, and despite the fact that there really aren't any other mainline 2D Spongebob games except for the portable titles for GBA and DS, I think Spongebob Super Sponge for PS1 was good for what it was and would pave the way for the great Spongebob game renaissance on the PS2, which I will most definitely play and or talk about some of them at a much later date. So, having said all that, have you played Spongebob Super Sponge? If so, feel free to tell me about your experience in the comments section below. And as I'm sure some of you already know, this will be the final review in my current Nickelodeon Games Marathon, which I should have definitely finished like a month or two ago. <laughs> but we are finally here. It was a lot of fun playing these games and making these videos for y'all. Eventually, after I finish my current Cartoon Network Marathon, I may return to Nick Games at some point, especially now that I can comfortably stream PS2 games, so stick around to the channel if you're interested in seeing that soon. As I have said time and time again, thank y'all very much for watching another episode of Anubis Black Games. Have a great day, and I'll see you again in the next video. Alright, bye bye